In a time where we have access to any and all music right at our fingertips, why do people go out of their way to listen to records? People saying warm sound is kind of the easiest way. I don't think you can beat that. The, the warmth and just the, the sound that the record brings. And when you put that needle into that groove, that person comes back to life. Is it a feeling of connecting with the past, a family tradition, or simply the hands-on experience of picking out the perfect record? My name is Sofia Caliero. I've recently started my own record collection of the Mamas and the Papas, my favorite folk rock band from the 60s. The people we're going to talk to, whether they know it or not, have inspired me to begin and have helped me continue my collecting journey. Now, I have my own reasons, but let's ask others. Why do people still play records? Our first stop is on Murray Avenue in Squirrel Hill, somewhere I've spent too much money, yet still not enough. Uh, my name is Christian Grauser, and I'm the owner of Jerry's Records. We are the, the largest used record store, possibly in the country. I mean, we're definitely top five in the country, used only. Why I'm drawn to records is mostly the sound. I mean, and that's a pretty cliche thing you're gonna hear time and time and time again. You know, the, the warm sound that a record delivers that is not matched by other media, basically. collect records because it's something tangible you can hold and look at the liner notes. Part of it's nostalgia, I'm sure, right, for a lot of people. Um, I do personally believe, I, I prefer the way a record sounds as opposed to a digital format. It, it's a more immersive experience. If, if you play something on your phone or whatever, it's easier to just have it be part of the background. Chris mentions how playing a record is a much more hands-on experience. And I think I know some people who may agree. The whole process of picking it up, touching it, putting it down on a turntable, so many things are just like point and click now. Just taking that few moments, that's just um, a pleasure that we don't get in most of our lives anymore. Next up is the Attic Records in Millville. When I first went, I saw so many Mamas and Papas records that I didn't have. And, uh, well, I had to buy all of them. And I also got to talk with Danny and Tyler, who work at the attic. And they had a great outlook as to why they think people prefer the physical format to the digital. Everything's at your fingertips on the internet. But to me, it doesn't exist until I can hold it in my hand. Yeah. And just this having that in your hand, that tactile feeling of holding the record, uh, the cover art, the liner notes, everything. I've learned so much over the years. <laughs> you can beat that the the warmth and just the, the sound that the record brings when you're just sitting and listening to it but again the analog uh, to me is just always the best sounding nothing wrong with digital that compressed sound sometimes it's a little tinny we like what we hear yeah and the majority of that is always the analog sound the next I talked with Rick Seaback someone I've known my whole life Rick has gifted me with many Mamas and Papas memorabilia and more records than I can count. And if you're looking for variety, you should ask to look through his collection. I'm not a musician. I don't really know music, but I love music. My name is Rick Seaback and I am a TV producer, a public television producer at WQED in Pittsburgh. I play records, vinyl records, in a bar in uh, this neighborhood in Pittsburgh called Squirrel Hill. Um, the name of the bar is Independent Brewing Company. Sounds like a brewery, but it's not. It's just a, a bar. It wasn't until I started to play records there that I realized in front of the building it says, Beer, Cocktails, Vinyl. And it was during the pandemic, actually, that I happened to be talking to the owner. 
And he said, I got to go because I am playing records. And I said, what do you mean you're playing records? And he said, we play records here on Wednesday nights. And I said, I want to do that. And he said, we'd love to have you. So and I've been playing records in this bar for about two and a half years now. Well, it's funny. I think some people are drawn to vinyl because they feel like the sound is better. I don't think my ears are that attuned to the quality of the music that I think, oh, this sounds so much better than a CD. That's not at all what it is. I think my connection to vinyl records is more uh, just my hoarder tendencies. I like to have the physical thing. I like to hold it in my hand and, you know, have a record of it. I mean, that's a pun, I guess, to have a record of it, but I, I like having the physical object. I find that people remember what was their first album and, you know, uh, like I know that my first album was given to me by my parents instead of candy on Easter because I was trying to lose weight and uh, they gave me Herman's Hermits. I also remember that the first album I bought with money that I made myself was the Rolling Stones album called Between the Buttons. So they're like landmark albums, I think, that you remember, which I don't think, I don't know if you do that when you stream things or download them. You just don't have that connection to the physical object. It's funny Rick brings up landmark albums because he actually bought me my first vinyl, the Mamas and the Papas' first album, If You Can Believe Your Eyes and Ears, which he found at Jerry's and which kickstarted my collection. I love going to record stores which, you know, there aren't that many record stores anymore, but Jerry's, I think, is the, the biggest store around uh, here in Pittsburgh, and I think it's one of the largest in America, too, um, you know, with a, an incredible collection. And I used to say I just sort of signed over my paycheck to Jerry's. <laughs> when I first started to work here, I would go to Jerry's almost every day. There are other record stores around. I like The Attic in Millvale. Um, now I go a lot to Goodwills and Salvation Army because records there are so cheap. And on the right day, you'll find some gems. It's interesting to me that when I, you know, someone knows that I play records, you'll find other people who love records. And, you know, they're all around us, not always obvious. Doug Oster, who is famous as a gardener here in Pittsburgh, he has a Rolling Stones collection on vinyl. And he was the first person to say, can I come play records with you? And my friend Lance Jones often comes and he has, he worked for Warner Brothers Records for a couple of years and he has some amazing albums. Um, and then uh, uh, Jason Arginus, who is our uh, HR guy here at WQED, he came and played records with me one night. But then also, uh, I. Uh, through Chris Fenimore, I met uh, Tom Roberts. And Tom Roberts uh, helped me with the music on several shows, but he composed the music and played it himself. He's a pianist. But he is also a huge record collector, mostly 78s. He has, uh, has a great interest in Pittsburgh jazz and, you know, rarities of Pittsburgh jazz and an incredible collection of 78s. So he's helped me in a couple different ways, uh, not only as a pianist and composer, but also as a record collector. You can feel his love for it. If your heart is open, you will be moved to tears. I have had people crying when they hear some of these records on some of the machines that I have. I am Tom Roberts. I'm a pianist, a composer, a bon vivant, a record collector. I don't have the biggest collection in the world. I don't even have the, I don't know, there might be people even in Pittsburgh who have more stuff than me, but I definitely have the most diverse collection. I don't collect things 
for the rarity. I know some guys that collect things because they're rare. I have to have something that I really like that makes me happy. Printed on paper. To connect with the past is such a profound thing. To realize that there are things here that belong to someone else and then you recognize that, it's just amazing. And then little notes that people write on some of the records. I've got a Louis Armstrong record here where someone actually wrote something in white ink. It's just a remarkable, you kind of touch the past. Ooh, I got good stuff. Do you know how they recorded these things? A person's breath, either through their speaking, through their singing, or through a musical instrument, put the air molecules into vibration and it was captured inside a horn. So we're one step away from those people. When you hear one of these records, you are one step away from them. They are in the room with you. It is a time machine. They are in the room with you. When I put on this Caruso record over here from 1906, he is in the room with you. That breath is captured in the grooves of these records. And when you put that needle into that groove, that person comes back to life. It's delightful to see people moved to connect with this the same way that I connect with it. I have the first jazz record of a band from Pittsburgh with teenaged Earl Hines, fresh out of Shenley High School. It's here now. It's, the important thing is it's back home here. I get this impression that we all have this longing to connect with what was here and maybe subconsciously that's what people are connecting with. Yeah. Or they think it's got better sound because they saw it on like the Insta. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime people come over here and visit and see this, then they say, oh my God, I can't, you know, and then I just kind of implant that little bit of, look, this is, this is amazing. You should really cherish this and make sure it's safe for future generations. Well, not only do we now know places to buy records, somewhere to listen, and people who collect. But we've learned why people still love them. The feeling of warmth they bring to a room, the physical connection to the past, being able to read the liner notes and admire the cover art. We've received a lot of answers to our big question. But the most important answer is what a record means to you. Find what you love. Find what you love. Connect with something that you love. It doesn't have to be this old stuff. It could be to find something that really touches your heart and then go after it. It's, it's not a big mystical journey. You find something that you love and you try to connect with it and bring it into your life. And then the next step is to share that with other people. Rock, waiting for my baby, I rock. Rock. She'll be coming, baby, I rock, rock, waiting for my baby, I rock, 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 rock.